realized what it was. How could there be a war on terror and, and, and actually say that we're having a war against terrorism and leave the borders wide open? If you were the President of the United States, or I were the President of the United States, and 9-11 really happened the way they want us to believe it happened, the first thing you would do is shut down the borders so people couldn't get in the country to harm you. But they left the borders wide open because the bankers want the borders open because they want a one-world government. They want, a, they want a North American Union. They don't want borders here. The 9-11 was only a manifestation. It was done to create a fear in the American public, right, so that, that we will obey what they want us to do. And the very first, take Richard Reed, the shoe bomber. Here's a guy who was six foot six, ugly as could be. I heard he smelled, okay? He sits in coach on a plane, lighting matches to put his shoe on fire, surrounded by people. It's idiotic. If you were gonna blow up a plane, you go into the bathroom, you close the door, and you put your shoe on fire. You're not gonna sit there surrounded by people lighting matches on a no smoking flight. They want you to believe this nonsense. It's ridiculous. Seven Sevens come out now and the majority of the British people think it's an inside job, and all the evidence points towards it being an inside job. Yeah, I mean, I mean what happened in England, London? Yes. All this is nonsense. It's just keep people in fear. It's this endless war on terrorism that doesn't really exist, so people will be submit to whatever the government wants them to submit to. Searches, check your shoes, have ID cards, put chips in you, you know, where you become servants to the elite. That's what this is all about, you know? Restore America's Republic to what it's supposed to be, get the bankers out of our government, get, change, get, get the bankers out of our government. Government should stop borrowing money from the banks. Government should make its own money, restore the Republic, individual freedoms. That's what this country is about. And until we do that, we're going we're gonna to be slaves. I mean, to me, uh, I, I, see, I, I see people like Bill O'Reilly on television, right? And I see how much they control the media. Like there's this girl on Bill O'Reilly the other night uh, from an organization saying the world can't wait. And she, this girl was spot on. Everything she was saying was the truth. And all Bill O'Reilly could do was call her a lunatic. He couldn't challenge the facts. They, they just call people names. They can't, and, and until we just find that, look, this world, we're heading into a world of danger, possible nuclear wars, you know, because the banking industry is trying to take over the world. 9-11 is the beginning of the war on terror. That war on terror is leading us into Iraq, which is the next lie. So you had the lie of 9-11, how that happened. No, nobody knows how Building 7 came down. Okay, we know 9-11 was a fraud. The American people don't know it, but more and more of them are believing it. Okay, so that was the first lie. Besides the inception, I'm not going back to the inception of the Federal Reserve, that original lie. But 9-11 was the first lie in this present state we're in. 9-11 is the kickoff of the war against the American people and the people of the world. 9-11 was a phony. It's a fraud. It didn't happen the way they told us it happened. Now, because of 9-11, we then had the authority to go into Afghanistan and Iraq. Iraq didn't have weapons of mass destruction. Okay, so that was the next lie. Now they're talking about going into Iran. Now how would you feel if you were Iran and you had this big powerful country, America, go into your next door neighbor, take over, take over their oil fields, right? Wouldn't you be worried that what they were gonna do to you? Of course you're gonna be worried. But, uh, but the people of America don't think about it from Iran's point of view. They think about it from our point of view. So now we're gonna send more troops into Iraq and keep building up because they want Iraq and the Middle East to become part of the New World Order. And uh, Iraq was using, uh, Saddam wanted to start using euros instead of dollars, right? He was uh, messing up their, their whole consumption. Iran is, wants to start using euros instead of dollars. They are, they have. Okay? So I'm saying, what they're trying to do is preserve their power. And one lie leads to the next lie, leads to the next lie. And until you get to the root cause of 9-11, which is supposedly the war on terror, will never solve our problems here. Should we send more troops into Iraq? Should we not send more troops into Iraq? Well, the truth is, the fact is, that it all goes back to this war on terror. Where did 9-11 come from? That's the root cause of everything. 
And until we have a full investigation, find out why Building 7 fell down, why they shipped all the steel out of America so quickly, you know, from the buildings, why, why all the um, things that don't make any sense about 9-11, until we find out why it really happened, you know, we'll never understand why there's a war on terror. And we'll never be able to prove that the war on terror is a phony. You know, Nick and I discussed many things. One of the things we discussed, or he brought up in conversation, was reducing world population and felt that there were too many people in the world. In a way, I agree, there are too many people in the world, but I don't think I have the authority to say who's going to die and who's not going to die, you know. But they felt that uh, they want to reduce world population, and uh, he felt that it should be reduced by a half. He even mentioned to me once uh, that they, they were having a real problem trying to solve the Israel-Palestinian um, problem. And he talked to me once about uh, they were playing with the idea of bringing Israel to Arizona, you know, and taking all the people from Israel and giving everybody a million dollars and setting up Israel in the state of Arizona. Unbelievable. Just to, to, end that, to end that problem, because that, that, that's a problem that, they, that they're not in charge of, in a sense. They, they, they're not controlling that problem. They're very arrogant. They can do whatever they want to do. We have, and we, we've given these people the authority to create money out of thin air. And through that device, they control everything. And if you want to win the battle to stop that, you have to deny them the ability to create money. It's only because they can make money that they have all this power. They literally have the money machines. They, they have the money machines. They can print it. They can do whatever they want to do. They own everything. And we take over pretty quick. If we were the guys that issued the money, everybody had to come give us real assets for the use of this money we just printed up. You know, people, people uh, you know, I, I tell people, you know, uh, why in the world does the American government borrow money from the banks when they have the ability to create it themselves without borrowing it and paying interest on it? Why? And nobody can answer that question. Not one politician ever raises that. Why does the American government borrow money when they can create it without paying interest? Well, we did create it and, up until uh, 1913. 1913. And, and so people say, well, because if the American government does it, it'll create inflation. That's the answer. I say, well, let's look at it. The American government has the Federal Reserve do it, which creates the same inflation as if they did it. But also with the inflation, now you're getting massive debt. So with the Federal Reserve, you have inflation and debt. Now, if the American government made the money, backed by gold, which limited the amount they could make, you wouldn't have debt and you wouldn't have inflation. But, but inflation was only about 50% from the 1780s, I've looked it up, until the late 1800s. And then we have the central banks already trying to cause some panics, which they then used to push the Federal Reserve. And if we look at inflation since 1913 into 2007, uh, it's exponential. In fact, a dollar is worth about two pennies to what it was worth in 1913. Federal Reserve Chairman, former Federal Reserve Chairman Alan Greenspan, doubled the money supply from 2000 to 2006. Uh, and then Edward Bernanke, the new Fed chief, came in and said he's going to double it again in the next two years. And then he said, oh, now I'm going to make the money supply numbers secret. And so now we don't even know. Right. Uh, but the evidence is they are just, I mean, in the curve of inflation, it gradually grows. And then suddenly at a point, it goes straight up. And it seems we've it's now... It's parabolic, made, yeah. Yeah, parabolic. But the, but the thing is that uh, the only thing I disagree with you on from uh, uh, early 1800 to 1930,